And that's where I try to make it about what the law says and what science says, because science will support when life actually begins, mm -hmm. which is conception. Mm -hmm. Science will support that this is a living creature that's not the woman. It's mm -hmm. a separate person. I'm Kaitia. And I'm Jarrell. Welcome to our podcast where we talk about glowing through life instead of just going through life. It's a his and hers perspective about modern topics and hot button issues. From Christians just like you. Well, let's get into it. Ooh, we're gonna glow through it. Your life matters and God put you on earth to do something. The fact that God put you on earth and God made you is a big example of how he loves you. Why, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Glowing Through It. This is part two of our discussion on the Roe versus Wade decision. Uh, today, the title is The World's Response to Roe versus Wade. Last time, uh, my wife, well, by the way, my name is Jarrell Connor, and this is Kaitia Lamore. And Kaitia, she talked a little bit about the church's response last time. So today, I'm sharing on the world's response, which is kind of what I've been enthralled in <laughs> the past five days or so. <clears throat> um, just a little bit about me. <laughs> I do a, I have a history online on social media across whatever platform of having lively discussions about p potentially polarizing topics. Uh, it, it all started many years ago. I think it was on MySpace and I would have, I'd go, they had chat rooms and all these different things where it was like groups. We were talking about different topics and it started with kind of more apologetics where It'd be a Christian group, and then the atheists would come in, and they'd be like, you guys are dumb, and evolution is everything, and there's no exactly. proof of your spaghetti, flying spaghetti monster god in the sky, whatever. So all these claims. So for me, my history is seeing that, and then heavily researching everything I can to have a, a lively discussion where we're, we're talking um, back and forth, but we're, we're exchanging rational reasonable coherent ideas it's not like debating and arguing it's it's that's that context so back in 2020 it kind of shifted to being a little bit more political because i saw a bunch of people just spouting lies and i'm like how do people say this and i see over here it's really this and i know it's this because i looked into it and then these people are still saying that so i would talk about that and a lot of people hated me my friends and family members and defriended me and all that stuff. So um, a lot of those, some of those people have come back and apologized and whatever, but, but God was telling me like, okay, that's enough with that, talking about that. And I just mostly been talking about Jesus and posting about scriptures and things that were like encouraging for a while. But now it's interesting because when this decision came out, I, feel, I felt it like on my heart that this was something that I was gonna be talking again about. So past few days, I've been doing that. And, and with that was a lot of like looking into things and why, why people have a different opinion, why are people thinking this or that. So in, in talking about um, the world's response, it, it's similar to what Tia was talking about in the last one, but it's, it's my, my interactions have been from a place of trying to be compassionate mm -hmm. and understanding. Because the main questions I was asking was, I know a lot of people upset, but I know what the court decided. So why are they upset about that? Because the courts, essentially, they looked at 50 years of this policy, and they said, this should have never happened. In 1973, mm -hmm. this is not a constitutional right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the Constitution that protects abortion as a thing. They're not saying no one ever have abortion. That's a separate issue. All they're saying is the states, where it was for hundreds of years, are the ones to decide this. The people in those states elect these people, these officials, to govern their state based on the laws and how they 
apply them in their own state. And that's where it belonged, and the court this year decided it goes back there. Mm -hmm. So my question was, why are people so upset? And there was various answers, but a lot of the people, and I think most of these people weren't Christians, and, and there was very much, it became a rights issue. Like, they're taking, they're stripping rights, and then, but I'm like, the courts, did, like, it goes back to the states. And they're like, well, the trigger laws, like these laws in different states were triggering bans mm -hmm. or prohibitions or regulations. Mm -hmm. And so it's like getting to a place where, yeah, I can understand people feel like the rug is pulled out from under them because yeah. all the people I'm talking to are under 50. So their whole life, this was just like abortion. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. And anything that goes against them is a rude awakening. Mm -hmm. So I came to kind of understand that point of view. But then for me, the abortion conversation has layers of, of a discussion. Mm -hmm. And what the court, the Supreme Court decided, they're totally at, right, like totally agree. There's nothing that they did that was- Subjective. Subjective, everything was done. They did their job, essentially. They put it where it's supposed to go. So then for me, that's like a wash. No one should be upset with the Supreme Court because there's no basis for that. But there's layers of the, the abortion discussion. And, and then I got into a lot of the nuanced discussions with that. And for me personally, I can bring up personal situations where it's like, well, I've dealt with, like, well, I have children and seeing like sonograms and the ultrasound and how, how young their development mm -hmm. was and knowing that they have personalities when they're in the belly because they reacted differently and all these mm -hmm. things are like, I could use those kind of things that people would say, well, that's just your whatever. It's not like, it's your opinion or I don't believe your experience or whatever the, the argument. So I always go to like, what are the facts? If you're talking mm -hmm. about body my choice, then what do you mean by that? <laughs> because you have to like articulate your your viewpoint because you have to have justification. Whenever you're getting into a conversation, you have to have clear terms and definitions. And people had a real difficult time with like saying how they justified that the woman's body that the baby is part of the woman's body, mm -hmm. even though it has a different DNA, even though like the woman doesn't have four arms or 20 fingers and those kind of things and a different blood type. It's like, it's definitely a different person. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different arguments about viability, all these things. So my approach is very much, what does it say biologically? What is, what do medical physicians say? What is, what is the actual factual empirical yep. data and evidence? And whenever I go into that like, category, people who are pro wanting abortion, pro abortion, they have uh, generally dif difficult, they have difficulties with justifying why it's okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to me that, that ends up being the main point. It's, mm -hmm. I saw t today, actually, I saw another post, someone who's not a Christian, they made a post and they were like, we're having the wrong debate. Like it was about, we shouldn't be focusing on um, if the courts or the government should rule on abortion. It's, this is a thing where it's about body uh, autonomy and, and body rights. Like people shouldn't have their bodies regulated by the government. And then I saw amazing and people posted and it was like, well, I totally agree with this person, this person, this person, because it's, it's really about, is there right to end a life? Mm -hmm. And in people who argue that it's not a life or that it's part of the body, they can't, like, they have problems justifying it, like I said, but that's, that's saying if it is the body, but of course a human within a human is another body and it's not the same body so mm -hmm. that's kind of where the main part of the the argument is and um just those got kind of conversations have kind of go around and around and around and and i'm trying to find i think the important thing as christians is to know that we're not talking to other christians about generally speaking there are some christians who try to say that i'm pro choice, whatever. But we can't expect the world to have godly views. Mm -mm. So we can't talk to a secular world and expect them to have the same values or morals. But what we do 
do <laughs> is uh, it's, not a, it's not an issue of what does the Bible say and that's what our government should, yeah. what the law should be. And I think a lot of Christians make that mistake. Like we're Christians and everything about our life is informed by what Jesus taught. And we look, I look at everything through like the filter, through the lens of the Bible. But I don't need the Bible. I don't need religion to say that killing a baby is wrong. I don't need that standpoint to make a law because we don't live in a theocracy. We live in a, a democracy or a republic. Mm -hmm. And our laws aren't based on, like, obviously based on the Bible. It, that's the root of it. And a lot of them do come from, like, biblical and uh, yeah. Judeo Christian values. But you don't need that to say that, that there is morality and that there's right and wrong and mm -hmm. that the government is saying you can't kill or murder this person, you can't mm -hmm. murder this person, and, and different things. So I just said a lot, and my <laughs> mouth is getting dry. But did you have anything um, to weigh in on that? Yeah, my mouth was getting so dry in the last video um, that we record. As you can see, we're wearing the same thing, so we just recorded the other video. But I, I wanted to take it back to your point about just being objective, because one of the responses that I had gotten from Instagram that I read last time was, what do you think is the true intentions behind the overturn? And I try not to read into what people are saying because I'm just like, what do you mean by true intentions? Like, do you feel like there's an agenda to this or something? But I feel like the true intentions are to follow the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And that is literally all it is. And so that's why I feel like, okay, with what they did, because it's like, that's what they're supposed to do. Do I agree even that state should have legal abortion? No. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously as a Christian, it's not okay to me. I don't care what state you're in and where, you know, you draw the line. It's like, I feel like it should not be happening, you know, just as a moral compass. But like you were saying in this, these types of situations where you're having conversations with people who aren't believers, you do have to learn how to say, if I removed the Bible, if I removed my faith from this, is this still a bad thing? Mm -hmm. Very much so. So I think that it's critical to understand things like biology, science, how government works, what are politics, and that it shouldn't run your life, like your whole life's mission shouldn't be like to know all the politics in the world and the government. Um, and if God calls you to government and politics, I feel like you better know what you're doing. You know, if he calls you to anything, you better be very dedicated, very earnest and doing things by the book and being, you know, not like living in the gray area of things. So yeah, I think the true intentions of it were simply to do what the Supreme Court was meant to do. And it's just a tragedy, like I said before, that this Roe v. Wade was even a thing, and that's a whole subject, though, that, you know, I'm sure you'll go more into that, but yeah, that was my main thing. I think you've done a really great job in having conversations with people and trying to get to the root of what the truth is, and not just using the shield as, you know, my Christian walk with God, yeah. and what I feel, and what I think. It's like, no. Can we get people to to be on the same page that, like, this is not okay, or this body inside of your body is not your body. Like these kind of concepts that are just so out there and wild. It's just like, let's bring it on down <laughs> to planet Earth. And like, if you don't agree with these simple truths, then you've made up your mind and kind of, I feel like you just want to do what you want to do. Yeah. And you're trying to find ways to do what you want to do. And that's where we get into trouble and in how society degrades when if people doing what they feel like doing becomes the rule, that's anarchy and that's a dangerous place to live. It is. And a lot of people and you have think... about six minutes. Okay, a lot of people think that that's what they want. Uh, to that point... Uh, you think people think they want anarchy? Lawlessness? I, th I think they want... They th I think they think that they want it. Because um, they don't understand... Because you hear it a lot where it's like, well, we want you to respect our our thinking about this. And mm -hmm. we we can't just go back to how things used to be and, and you're not considering this marginal, marginalized group of people. But then they push it on you so that they're the special group of people that you have to bow to what they want. But, the, but you can't hold to what you... Like if someone says, like a trans issue... Like, oh, do you use these pronouns and then change your language and do all these mm -hmm. things. But it's like, 
we, even when people are like tolerant, they're like, you can, yeah, you can do what makes you happy and do this stuff, and they'll say that. But no, it's not enough. They want you to change your own beliefs so that they can encompass yours. So that's like, they think they want this thing to change. Mm -hmm. And anarchy wouldn't be, because then anarchy would mean that people wouldn't believe what they want to believe, but then they want to be accepted. And it's like, no, it, it's it's something that they don't understand what's changing. And that's why it's it's the value of having order yeah. and structure and ru the point of rules. The rules yeah. is, it keeps society sane and safe. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I said a couple of scriptures uh, before about how where it talks about the Bible, it talks about um, where life begins in, in life in the womb and stuff. Um, but part of the discussion, what I, I noticed with talking with people who weren't believers was they were very much wanting to use, like two arguments were the main ones. It, it's the body my choice thing and making the baby a body, but also like viability. Like it can't even survive outside of the womb and all these different things. But the every single argument that makes a case for abortion being morally okay because you're not murdering a baby or ending a life, it, they all fall apart. There's nothing that supports a life, ending a life within your body. Being okay. And that being okay. Yeah. And then they try to, people try to make the argument where it's like, but it doesn't even have a face or the eyes are barely formed and it's like it's like who cares it's just a clump of cells i'm like well i'm just a clump of cells you're just a clump of cells and if people are like well it's not conscious and it's not sentient and it's like well if people were in a coma are you going to kill them mm -hmm. if someone has someone brain has activity it, it's like life is life and people want to devalue life and and every time someone wants to justify abortion they end up having to go through these hoops to like suspend all understanding of mm -hmm. life and that's where I try to make it about what the law says and what science says because I can't go to the Bible and I don't need to go to the Bible because science will support when life actually begins mm -hmm. which is conception mm -hmm. science will support that this is a living creature that's not the woman it's mm -hmm. a separate person Science will support, and definitionally, people like to use parasites. We talked about this. Oh my God. It's not a parasite because it's a separate species. I mean, not, it's the same species. It's a parasite, parasite is a doctor. different species. So all these different arguments aren't supported by actual facts. Um, but legally speaking, th there's this whole like conundrum of, well, we need to have rights, and we need to make laws, and the law should support these things. There's already laws, and some of the laws are... Um, where murder, we know murder, we've heard about that. I know murder. Murder is illegal, and people wouldn't contest that that should be the law. But if a woman is in a car accident or a shot, and well, yeah, if it's like manslaughter or something that happens where it ends the person's life, and someone was involved yeah. that caused it, they will be charged with the baby dying as yeah, well. So it'll be a double ho double homicide. Um, and someone made the argument, I, this is one of the last things, but <laughs> oh, no. they made the argument and I, I was open to hearing it and I was asking about justification, but they wouldn't come back and talk about it. They kind of disappeared and they never came back to discussion, but they're making a case. Well, yeah, a baby is just, it's not formed in early stages, it's underdeveloped and it's like an organ. And it's like, of course we have body autonomy because if you, if you die, you have to sign on the donor card so that people, the doctors can use your organs. And you have rights over your organs even if you're dead. And I'm like, a baby's not an organ. Plus, using that logic, it falls apart because if a mother, this happens, this has happened multiple times, if a mother dies, is pregnant, and the baby's still alive, the doctor will deliver the baby. They don't have to have a signed waiver. They don't, that do, that baby is not the body of the yeah. mother. That baby is alive and the mother is deceased. There's cases where that's happened and the baby survived. So people use arguments that aren't substantiated in fact. They use things that are smoke screens. They want to like talk about what are you doing to help the mothers then if you don't if you want all these babies to be born. It's better for the baby to be dead than to be in the foster care system because the foster care system is so terrible. But are you doing anything to help the foster care system? I don't think you are. Are you like you rather have it, you rather end a life than have that life be l potentially less 
advantageous than it would have been if they were in a better neighborhood or they had more money. It's like you don't know what that that life would have been. There's mm-hmm. plenty of people who were going to be abortions. We you know we've heard testimonies of people like yeah. the other twin of a, a baby that was aborted yeah. and the twin survived. There was other cases where the mother was going to and then she changed her mind. And all these things where these people still live productive lives. Yeah. And so don't use those kind of arguments. It they're not ba- based in fact. You just want to do something. Just say you want to do it. That's it. If you if you're okay with murder, if you're okay with killing or ending a life, then if that's your stance, just say that. Then say that. So a lot of times they'll use these these um, smoke screens and these things that are undercover, but it's like they all fall apart. And I would totally be on board with. I, that's why I open up my conversation. I'm open to hear you. If you're telling me something, just support it. Use real data. Use something that justifies it. And then mm-hmm. I can respect you for your point of view. But when you just drop stuff off and then you run away from the conversation. <laughs> or, or you follow you, the script. Or you just go in a circle where it's like you're not bringing any logic to the conversation. Then you can't justify your point of view. And that's the whole thing. I would totally respect someone who's like, I believe in this and this is why. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you just doing something because you want to do it or because people told you to do it or you align with a group of people. And we need to really be serious about why we do and why we say and think the things we do. Yeah. And I agree with that because I feel like the the most interesting thing about this, and the time is up so we'll um, finish up, but I feel like the interesting thing of how you said it was people, I feel like at the end of the day, just want to do something and they're trying to justify it and i'm like well if morality wasn't a thing if deep down we didn't have a sense of what is right and wrong because god placed that inside of us if deep down we didn't have that like nobody would feel bad about murder nobody would feel bad about theft um or hurting somebody Mm. else but because you know there is deep down there is something wrong with just saying i don't want this baby and i'm willing to do this to get rid of it that's why they don't want to just say, I don't want the baby, you know, and there's some people and I actually give them a little bit of credit. I feel like that is evil and that's not OK, but at least you're honest to say, I just don't want it. And I don't even care. I don't care that it's a life. I don't care that it could grow into a human. I just don't want it. But so many people are like, well, what can we say to make ourselves look better? Yeah. And it's like, well, why do you want to look better? Because you know it's wrong. So that's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> no, I think that's a great, like, tying everything up with a nice bow. Oh, that last point, because this, I guess this does tie into it. There are some Christians who hold to um, pro poor, <laughs> poor abortion. <What? laughs> Pro. Prohibition? Prohibition. They, they hold to like pro-abortion or pro-choice views. Um, there are scriptures that does talk about um, life in the womb too. The, I, I talked to the other ones about Psalm 139 and Jeremiah 1.5, but Exodus 21, 22 through 25, it talks about punishment for if you strike a pregnant woman and cause them basically harm to the baby, then it will you basically be charged with murder and it, it, it's called like taking a life and it's at that time it was a life for a life so it would be a death penalty mm. if he caused it so um there are a lot of things within the discussion for christians who are pro abortion that you can use the bible to s- substantiate why the bible is against it mm-hmm. as well um but I hope what you guys heard today, it goes to heart, and I'm going to close this out in prayer, and that's what I'm going to (laughs) do. Lord, thank you for uh, this conversation today. Uh, I know that this is a potentially volatile topic, and it gets to um, a lot of people's emotions, and it does, it is polarizing, and uh, we know that you do have truth, and you have a viewpoint on this. This is not something that you're silent about. This is not something that uh, you condone and you've made it clear in your word. So we just pray that the people who are watching or listening, uh, that you would minister to their hearts. Uh, I know that this decision will affect a lot of people and maybe in unexpected ways that they didn't uh, see coming. 
Uh, so whatever issues that certain uh, people or their potentially new moms that are affected by it, please just help them and, and the, the babies in their wombs. Uh, please give them comfort and guidance and, and lead them to a, support, a supporting community, whether, it, whether they need family around them to support them or uh, pregnancy centers and wellness centers, things like that to help them in this time. We just pray that you surround them with that kind of help and support. And, and people who are, have issues or have um, strong opinions about this topic, with everything, and I always do this in my videos, is like just help them to find truth, help them to look into the data, look into the information, look into even your word, and find what the truth is about the matter. And please help their hearts and their minds to be open. There's a lot of closed-mindedness right now. Please just break that in Jesus' name. We just pray that people be open to the truth and to hear the truth and to be able to have um, real meaningful conversations with one another about it and not be hateful or hurtful in their discourse. Lord, I pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for a wonderful discussion, Jarrell Connor. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching this on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment if you want to join the discussion. Even if you disagree with this, he would love to, to have a conversation with you and share you know, more because there's only so much we can go over yeah. in this. But I also wanted to say that last video, part one, where I talked about the church's response to Roe v. Wade being overturned, I mentioned a video that was very helpful to us from Ben Shapiro, who talks in depth for like two and a half hours about Roe v. Wade, why it was unconstitutional. He has a background in law. If I say anybody that we watch or that we listen to, it doesn't mean we fully endorse everything they've ever said, done, they're our best friend. It's just he has an objection, an objective point of view. There are other things out there too. I mean, I'm sure you've yeah. seen a lot of YouTube videos and YouTubers are saying, watch this documentary, watch that one, get informed. Um, but line by line, Ben kind of goes over the overturning and all of that. So you can watch that if you have the time or if you want to make the time. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for supporting us, for coming back week after week. For those of you who always comment, I feel like I scratch your knee every time I say that. Uh, for those of you who comment, for those of you who join the discussion, um, thank you so much. And if you want to continue to keep these videos coming, we do this all on our own. We're not getting paid for it or anything. So from the obedience to God, we do this. But if you want to help us, we always look forward to getting your prayer. I don't know if we look forward to getting your prayers. <laughs> we appreciate your prayers. Yeah. Thank you for your prayers. And if you want to go to our websites, we do have books. We have different merchandise and we get a portion of those sales. So I'm LamoreInChrist.com. He is TheRedR.com. And you can follow us on social media as well. But until we see you next time, we look forward to hearing from you and talking to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, you can show us by doing the like button. And please do the subscribe button. And... Please do the subscribe button and the notification bell. Ding, ding, ding.